what you're going to see here, folks, this morning is that the basic definition of an angel is basically a messenger. Now, that being said, the word is used in the Bible to refer to human messengers, and it is also used to refer to angelic messengers, all right? So again, we believe in angels because the Bible says that angels exist, and we'll be looking at more verses today than you're ever going to want to look at to demonstrate that angels are in the Bible, okay? The Old Testament 103 times has the word angels in it, okay? The, the, the Hebrew word that's translated angel or messenger. Look at 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 2. Notice, it says, And Jezebel sent a what? Messenger unto Elijah. That word messenger is the same word that is translated angel. So what is an angel? An angel is fundamentally a what? A messenger. The, mess the word can be used, though, in the Old Testament to refer to either a human messenger, in this case Jezebel sending a message to Elijah through a messenger, and it can also be used to refer to an angelic being or a divine messenger. Come with me to Genesis chapter 28. Genesis chapter 28. <coughs> it's gonna be, you guys are going to need to like do some finger burpees here and warm up your hands today because we're going to be looking at a lot of stuff. Okay, Genesis chapter 28, look at verse 12. Genesis chapter 28, verse 12. It says here, And he dreamed, and behold, a ladder set upon the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of who? God ascending and descending what? On it. There is enough, That's the same word there that's translated angels. That's translated angels is the same word that's over there in 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 2, which is translated messenger. So if you use the Bible to defer, define its own terms, what is an angel? An angel is fundamentally a what? A messenger. Okay, that being the case, and that being said, a divine, as a divine messenger, an angel is a heavenly being, okay, who's charged with some commission. There's some activity. There is some responsibility, some commission that the angel is responsible to discharge or to perform. That being said, if you look at the New Testament, the Greek word um, angelos, by the way, what's the name of the city out there in California? Los Angeles, the city of what? Angels, okay. The Greek word angelos it occurs 175 times in the New Testament. And it is used to refer to human messengers only six times. And the word angelos is similar to the Hebrew word malik, which we already looked at. It also means messenger, or one who speaks and acts in the place of the one who has sent him. So if we're talking about basic definition, fundamental, what is an angel? An angel is fundamentally the messenger of who? God. That has some responsibility that God has put them or commissioned them with to go out and discharge. Fundamentally, that's what an angel is. Okay? Now the scriptures, the scriptures speak uniformly of angels all throughout. Okay? In fact, the existence of angels is, is uniformly presented in the scripture. There are 34 books out of 66 that make reference to angels. All right? In the Old Testament, there are 17. And in the New Testament, there are 17. So of all, the of all the 66 books in your Bible, there are 17 books in the Old Testament and 17 books in the New Testament that make reference to angels. Okay? Whether it be by the Hebrew word or the Greek word, they're talking about the same thing. A messenger of God that has been sent forth and commissioned. Now, there are other terms in the Bible that are used also to describe angels other than the word angel. Okay? Come with me if you would look at Job chapter 1. Um, Brother Dave Reed, some of you remember him from the conference. He's the speaker this weekend at the uh, teen retreat that the boys are at. And he stayed at our house Friday night, uh, stayed overnight Friday night. And he and I were talking and we watched the movie. We watched uh, the, the, the Origins movie on the Wolverine for you X-Men fans in the room, which is no one probably. <laughs> so... So we watched this movie, and, and I'm sitting there talking, and this is another Grace Preacher, and he's like listing for me all the statistics on, on the X-Men. He's like, oh, well, you know, Brian, Spider-Man can lift 10 tons, and Wolverine, he can lift one ton, but the Hulk, he can lift 100 tons. And I'm looking at it, and I'm thinking, 
Why do, what do you, why do I won't need to know that? Well, that's the stats on the superheroes, right? This is what we're doing for angels, okay? I'm giving you the information. We're filling in the back of the card so that we can take that information and go look at some other things later on. Job chapter 1, look at verse 6. It says, Now there was a day, notice, when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also one among them. Look at Job chapter 38. Look at verse 7. By the way, you might want to mark this one. Job chapter 38. Job chapter 38, verse 7. It says, Job 38, verse 7, it says, When the morning stars sang together, and all the what? The sons of God shouted for joy. So the term, the, the angelic creation, okay, can be referred to in the Scripture by other terms other than just angel. And one of those terms is this term right here in Job, the sons of God. There's another one there where it says the morning what? The morning stars, okay? So there, there, are, there are references here in the Bible to angels and their existence that don't necessarily use the exact word for angel. Another one is holy ones, okay? Come with me to Daniel chapter 4. Daniel chapter 4. Daniel chapter 4, verse 17. There's actually two in this one, but we're going to hold off on discussing one of them till a, to a, till a later message. But if you look at Daniel chapter 4, verse 17, it says, This matter is by the decree of the watchers, and the demand by the word of the holy ones, to the intent that the living may know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and giveth them to whosoever he will, and setteth up over it the basis of men. You see in that, in that verse it talks about holy ones? Again, holy ones is another term that the scripture uses to refer to the angelic order, okay? The, the, the creation of the angels. Another word, a third word is host. You will hear the scripture talk. We're not going to look at all these references, but you, you can write them down if you want to. The scripture will talk about the heavenly hosts, and they'll talk about, um, it, it usually refers to that in terms of the armies of heaven as the heavenly hosts that are up there. The, an easy one that pretty much most of you are familiar with. Come with me to Luke. We'll only look at one here. Go to Luke chapter 2. You see that? I've got like five of them up there and I'm cutting it down to one. Luke chapter 2. Look at verse 13. You remember the story of the birth of Jesus and how the shepherds are in the field and, and the angel of the Lord appears to them in verse 9 and announces that, the, that the, the child has been born, and so on. And then if you look at uh, Luke chapter 2, verse 12, the angel says, And this shall be a sign unto you, ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, laying in a manger, verse 13. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of what? Heavenly host, praising God and saying. So you have the terms here that are used by the Word of God to discuss the angelic order, of, or the angelic portion of God's creation. They could be referred to as an angel. They could be referred to as a son of God or the sons of God. They could be referred to as holy ones, or they could be referred to as a host or a heavenly host or any sort of combination of those things. Any of those terms are referring to the angelic creation and the order that God made amongst the angels. Okay? Now, we need to talk this morning about the characteristics of angels. What are they? What are angels? Why are they significant? Um, and, and, and some things related to this. Okay, So, come with me first, if you would, to Psalm 148. The first point is that you have to realize about angels is that angels are created beings. Just as God created mankind... And he created all of the animal kingdom and, and, and so on. He also created angels. He created a whole structure and a whole host of angelic beings, which we'll be looking at here as we go through this this morning. So point number one about the characteristics of an angel is angels are created beings. Okay, They did not evolve from some lower form of life. 
They are created by God as a specific part of His creation. Psalm chapter 148, look at verse 2. 